Fox 45 News is demanding answers from city leaders about what they're doing to keep drivers and squeegee kids safe. It comes after a story Fox 45 News first brought you last night. A man accused of shooting two squeegee kids. Charging documents say he shot them because the squeegee kids stole thousands of dollars from his mom using a cash app. Now the city is dealing with the squeegee crisis while police are hundreds of officers short. Live team coverage tonight of these big problems facing Baltimore. Jeff Abel digging into some new data from the the FBI showing just how short staff BPD really is. We begin with Keith Daniels, who pressed city council members for answers about squeegee kids. Keith, what did they tell you? Well, Kai, we caught up with some council members at a public safety hearing here at City Hall, and tonight it's the chair of that committee who demanded answers from us instead of offering solutions and answering one of our questions. At Baltimore City Hall, appreciate the report. A public safety meeting. Councilman Mark Conway, quarterly crime stats. Chairman of the Public Safety and Government Operations Committee, learning more about the mayor's administration's efforts. Focus specifically on victim services in Baltimore City. In providing victim services, primarily for those impacted by violent crimes, including homicides. Current year homicide, Vic 343, we have 320, 335 in 2021. But tonight, pressing council members about the latest incident involving a Baltimore man accused in the alleged vigilante shooting of a group of squeegee kids. A violent incident that once again reignites the issue of squeegee workers. One of the questions for council members for the safety of motorists and squeegee kids should the corners be cleared immediately given the latest incident that police say happened. Wait, what? That question put to Conway. How would we clear the corners? You tell me. I, I mean, you asked the question. I, I, I want to make sure I understand what that means. How do you clear the Removing corners? Removing the squeegee kids from the corner. How, how do we do that? I don't know, Councilman. That's how do you do that? Well, I, I think that that's not for me to decide. Well, that's no, for I, you guys to decide. You, well, you asked the question, uh -huh. um, and you know, it seems like a good idea if only except you can't just remove people from corners. For decades, young people, mostly black teenagers, have congregated at downtown street corners washing windows for tips. Some drivers calling them a nuisance, performing an unwanted service leading to conflicts. Supporters of the squeegee kids say they're just trying to make an honest dollar with opportunities in their communities extremely limited. Still pressing council members about what to do about the kids with squeegees. Is it time now to remove them from the corners now? Yeah, well, uh, you know, if we're going to remove them from the corners, we're going to move everybody from the corners, right? How long will people in Baltimore have to wait before something is done about the problem, though? Well, it's not like we're not doing anything. Again, we're trying to get the right solutions in place. It's not like nothing's happening. So things are moving forward. How do you remove these kids from the corners? You can't just arrest them. And I think we had a long hearing, you know, four hours long before, that that's not really an option. Well, we took the same questions that we had here at the hearing to other council members who were not present. We emailed those questions. We're still waiting for responses. Meantime, we'll still push for answers. We're live tonight at City Hall. Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Keith, okay, thank you. Fox 45 News also sent several questions to Mayor Brandon Scott asking, are you failing to see there is a problem on these corners, both for motors and these kids? Why you're letting kids cause havoc in the city? If you can't handle uh, getting, if you can't get a handle on squeegee kids, how can you get a handle on crime facing the city? And what's your reaction to the man uh, accused of shooting two squeegee kids after his mother was robbed in an apparent scam? Well, the mayor responded to all four of our questions, and you can find those responses on our website, which is foxbaltimore.com. We would like to hear from you as well. Do you think and trust Mayor Brandon Scott to get the squeegee situation under control? So far, 99% of you who voted say no. You can head to foxbaltimore.com vote to weigh in. Well, there are laws in place to keep squeegee kids off the streets, but Mayor Scott is not enforcing them. One law states a person can't stand in a roadway to solicit a ride, employment, or business from a driver. Another statute targets aggressive soliciting, like blocking a driver, obscene language, or intimidation. Now, Police Commissioner Michael Harrison addressed those laws on WBAL radio this morning, saying there is not an easy answer. There are a lot of nuances to that.
So there is no just yes or no. And while there are laws on the books, don't forget, the, the way to enforce it has caused the police department problems. And that's what we are working on now with the collaborative, trying to figure out the appropriate constitutional way to enforce it. The commissioner is referring to the fact that panhandling is protected speech under the First Amendment. However, legal experts we have talked to say squeegee kids' actions often go beyond what the law protects. The Baltimore Police Department is using hundreds of hours of overtime to have officers sit at known squeegee corners. Police say there's no end date for the patrols, even though the commissioner himself has called the practice unsustainable. It is not sustainable because our manpower doesn't allow us to do that because there's so many other serious things uh, that we have to respond to and that we have to be in places to prevent. And so we can't sustain this indefinitely. Officers are working overtime to deal with the squeegee kid issue as the department struggles to fill hundreds of open positions. And tonight we're getting a new look at just how serious that situation is. Jeff Abel continues our team coverage with new data from the FBI. Jeff, what did you find out? Well, Kai, right now there are 141 fewer police officers patrolling these streets than there were at this time last year. Some experts fear we are heading toward a crisis that we may never recover. In this city's crime fight, there are fears that Baltimore could be facing a perfect storm. With violent crime racing toward historic levels, the dwindling number of crime fighters is making history too. Baltimore has more crime than the police can handle, and they can't recruit new cops because nobody wants to, to do the job. In fact, the newest numbers from the FBI show the number of sworn police officers in Baltimore has declined every year for the past decade. In 2013, the city employed more than 2,800 police officers, and every year since, the numbers have declined. Today, there are 2,197 officers fighting crime. That's a drop of almost 700 officers from a decade ago. That means there are only three officers for every four that the city used to have, and yet crime is getting out of control. This is a chance to be a part of the greatest comeback story in America. The city has struggled to recruit new officers. Earlier this year, the city added a $5,000 signing bonus to the $60,000 starting salary. But it's hardly enough to attract more officers than the city is losing. In a statement, the president of the police union wrote today, the retention efforts are non-existent and the recruitment efforts are a sham. Baltimore, you need to demand that this undercover defund the police movement by the police commissioner and mayor end now for all all of our safety. If Baltimore has a thousand officers by the end of the decade, I'll be shocked. Sean Kennedy with the Maryland Public Policy Institute believes the city may never recover if it stays on the same course. When you are losing more officers to retirement and resignations than you can recruit, they're leaving faster than they join, you are in trouble. And Baltimore has been in trouble for a decade. Well, according to the union tonight, so many officers are leaving this department, not only because of the pay, but also because of poor working conditions and what they call a hostile work environment. We are live tonight, Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Jeff, thank you. Well, as the Baltimore City Police Department struggles with staffing shortages, Johns Hopkins University is working to create its own police department. The officers would have the powers of a Baltimore City police officer. They would patrol the university's three campuses and respond to crimes like theft, robbery, and burglary. City Council was supposed to hold a hearing on the new department, but it was canceled. Last week, we sent several questions to every City Council member asking if they support the JHU police force, including, given the understaffing of the Baltimore Police Department, do you believe BPD can provide the level of policing on the campuses of Hopkins without a private police force? No one responded to our questions. Well, leaders in Baltimore also stay quiet on some of the big questions surrounding safe streets. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost shows us what's going on from the accountability desk. We're starting right now with City Hall because a couple of times a week the city spending board gets together and reviews contracts between companies or nonprofits and the city of Baltimore. Here's a photo of the group during their latest meeting, which happened on October 5th. And I want to go over some of the key players. 
City Council President Nick Mosby, he's one who chairs this entire spending board, but then we have the mayor, DPW Director Jason Mitchell, Comptroller Bill Henry, and then we have the city solicitor, Jim Shea. You can see them all sitting next to each other, and this happens every couple of weeks while they talk about these contracts with the city. And that makes it even more questionable when we hear that some of these leaders don't talk to each other, especially when we're talking about contracts with a program the mayor hails as Baltimore's flagship violence prevention program. And that's the Safe Streets program. And remember, it wasn't that long ago that we heard Mayor Scott say that no one in his office told the council president about changes coming to this program, even though that meant changes to the contracts. Here's what both of them said not too long ago. My team nor myself was provided any prior briefing on the restructuring of Safe Street. So is the council president lying? I, I can't speak to the council president, uh, but I know myself personally. I spoke to members of the council about restructuring of Safe Streets in specific areas. Who? Multiple council members. Despite these two sitting next to each other, approving millions of dollars in contracts month after month. There are still a lot of questions about what's going on with this program, and apparently these two leaders aren't talking about it. So that led us to go to this last Board of Estimates meeting and ask the mayor, what's going on? Mayor Scott, why won't, why won't your administration let us see Safe Street stuff? I just have one follow-up question, though. Is McKenzie, your administration hiding something when no, it comes to this program? we're not hiding Safe Street's money because the contracts are all put out in the public. Meanwhile, we're still waiting on answers from these two. Bill Henry and Jim Shea. And remember, these two sit on the same board of estimates at this meeting week after week after week. Last week, we sent those two a note asking for a few things. We're looking for the metrics used to determine the disbursements of funds to the Safe Streets program. Also, all contracts or RFPs between the City of Baltimore and organizations administering the Safe Streets program. Shea continues to ignore the question, but we did get a response from Comptroller Bill Henry's office. They tell us that they'll send us a formal response by the end of this week, so we'll keep our eyes peeled to our email. In the meantime, we'll continue to investigate the Safe Streets program, looking for answers about how this money is being spent once the city gives it to these nonprofits, especially since the changes to the program are already underway. At the Accountability Desk, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News.